I have a sample application here that demonstrates how we can add nested forms. And so if you click this button here, you can add as many addresses as you want to this particular model. And you can also go ahead and remove them on the fly, which is really cool. And the way that this works is we create a special helper function that renders out this link and it has a class of add fields and it has a data attribute of an ID and a data attribute with fields. And this is what's used to dynamically inject these fields onto the form. And what this looks like is in my application helper, I have this link to add fields method. And it essentially just instantiates a new object. And it, the object that it's instantiating is the associated model. So in this case, a person has many addresses. So that's what the new object is here. It's a new instance of an address. And then this block here is looking for a partial called address dot, or it's looking for the address underscore fields partial, which is right here. And what it's doing right here is we're just printing out a link with the class of add fields, and we're giving it these two data attributes with an ID and fields, which we can see here. And the ID needs to be unique because then we're going to use that to, um, we're going to use JavaScript to pluck out and replace the ID with a new timestamp. And if you've looked at other tutorials in the past, you've probably seen people do, doing this in jQuery, but in Rails 6, uh, Rails no longer ships with jQuery. So what I did is I created a new nested forms directory and I created an add fields JavaScript file and remove fields JavaScript file. And I'm just requiring them in the application JavaScript file. So in add fields, this is the actual JavaScript that allows us to click this button and add those fields in. So what it's doing is it's just looking for any link with add fields with the add field class and it's creating a new timestamp and the reason it's doing that is because when you're adding nested fields you need to have each one has to have unique index value and you can read more about that where is it complex forms right here so in this case, you know, zero and one, they need to be unique. So uh, one pretty much guaranteed way to make unique value is to just get a new timestamp. And then this line of code right here is just essentially looking into the data ID, it's getting that value and then it's just replacing that value in the fields section, to replacing that with a new timestamp, and then adding it to the page. So if you look in here, it's that number that begins with 1-5, that's the timestamp. And if we keep adding more, you can see that these are all unique values. And it just dynamically injects it into the page. And then you have to make sure that TurboLinks loads before you can call this class because this, I've, no, I've just run into an issue where this query selector all won't work and this JavaScript won't actually end up loading. The other file I made is just a remove fields file and it's more or less the same. And what it's doing is in order to remove those nested fields, um, you know, after you follow the documentation here um, and allow destroy true, and then you need to whitelist this destroy attribute in the form for the nested fields. You want to just add a field for underscore destroy. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting it to hidden 
and then adding this link here, which then, if I go and click remove, what it's doing is it's just, it's setting this value to be true, and then it's just hiding that actual row in here. Um, so see right here, display none if I deselect that. So it's still there, but it's just hiding it. And as you can see here, it set the value to one. Um, this is the destroy one. So if I go ahead and click update person, this person no longer has any addresses assigned to them. Um, so that's pretty much the walkthrough. I recommend following the steps in the, the Rails guides for nested forms, but then when you wanna make it actually dynamic and add fields on the fly, you wanna go into your application helper, add this helper method, and all that helper method does is it's just gonna create a link with the class of add fields, and you can change that to something else if you'd like. And it just sets a data ID and data fields dynamically to those values, and it's pulling it in based on a specific pattern. So it's, it's always gonna look for the singular name of the associated model. And then it pulls this information in, and then with your JavaScript, you just essentially, every time this button is clicked, take the information from here, but replace the ID, which is gonna be in all of the form fields, replace it with a new timestamp because it needs to be unique and then add it to the page.